Hello everyone, my name is Kak Hoang Ngo. I'm working in Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden. I'm going to present a work on low latency and secure computation of floating, assisted by hybrid relay reflecting intelligence surface. This is a joint work with Yan Tai Nguyen and Marco Junti from University of Ulu in Finland, Ting Quang Ding from Fossil Group Vietnam, and Chong Ming Huang from Bose and Telecommunications Institute of Technology, Vietnam. You know, nowadays we are living in a data flood. Every single minute on the internet, there are a lot of new data generated. These data are normally sent to cloud centers to be processed. However, the cloud centers are typically far away, which leads to latency and bandwidth bottleneck. This bottleneck can be overcome by edge computing. The idea is to move the computation resources from the cloud to the network edge near the users where the data are actually generated. In this work, we consider the computation of loading problem in edge computing. We consider a user who has some data to offload to an edge node to be processed. On top of that, there is an if dropper in the system. So this guy wearing very nice sunglasses here is actually a bad guy. He wants to eavesdrop on the data of the user. And our goal is to minimize the offloading latency while ensuring that the data is protected. The solution is twofold. First, we need to improve the communication between the user and the edge node. And second, we need to balance between the amount of data locally computed at the user and the amount of data offloaded to the edge node. For the first solution, to improve the communication, we can use the reconfigurable intelligence surface. The idea is that on top of optimizing the transmitter and the receiver, we can optimize also the environment by deploying a large surface, which has a large number of passive reflecting elements, which can tune the phase of the incoming signal so that the signal arriving at the receiver with favorable characteristics. To control the surface, we have a controller connected to both the surface and the receiver, which is the edge node in our case. So the surface helps us to create favorable propagation medium. However, there is a caveat, which has been shown that very large surfaces are required to beat the conventional relay. To overcome this drawback, a new structure of the surface has been proposed in this work. The idea is that we can replace a few number of passive reflecting elements by active relaying elements, which can tune not only the phase, but also the amplitude of the incoming signal. And this is called the hybrid relay reflecting intelligence surface. By doing so, we achieve a significant gain. So up to 50% increase in spectral efficiency can be achieved with only one active element. So this is good, and we are going to use it for our offloading problem. Now we go further into the communication model. We assume that the surface has n elements in total. A of them are active relay elements, and n minus a are passive reflecting elements. The set of active elements is denoted by calligraphic A, which is a subset of the set of indices from 1 to n. For example, if we have 20 elements in total, then the set of all elements is from 1 to 20, and A can be, say, 1, 3, and 15. The reflecting or relaying coefficients is denoted by alpha n for element n, which has this amplitude, and the phase is denoted by theta n. Now, since the passive elements can only tune the phase, we set their amplitude to be on one. For convenience, we denote by the vector alpha, the column vector that contains all the coefficients, and by the matrix epsilon, the matrix that contains all the coefficients in the diagonal. And we decompose this matrix into two matrices, one containing the passive elements and the other one, psi, containing all the active elements. We assume that the user has a single antenna, the eavesdropper has E antennas, the edge node has M antennas, the channel between the user and the surface is denoted by HH, the channel between the user and the edge node is HEN, and the channel between the user and the eavesdropper is the vector HEV. Finally, the channel between the surface and the edge node is denoted by the matrix G of size M times N. We assume that the eavesdropper knows perfectly the channel from the user, so this is actually the worst case. The edge node knows all the channels, except that it has only an estimate of the channel from the user to the eavesdropper, 
and we assume that this condition holds. So here, epsilon is basically an upper bound on the relative channel estimation error. The user transmits a data symbol S with power P. The signal arriving at the surface has this form. And then we can compute the transmit power of the active elements of the surface with this uh, formula. Finally, the receive signal at the edge node has this conventional form where edge is the equivalent channel vector containing the channel in the direct link from the user to the edge node and the channel in the indirect link from the user to the surface and then to the edge node. The equivalent noise Z contains the noise in the direct link and the noise amplified by the active elements of the surface. Z has a Gaussian distribution with zero mean and this covariance matrix, which we call Q. The edge node employs a linear combining vector W, so it reconstructs the data symbol as the inner product between W and the receive vector Y. The effective signal to interference plus noise ratio, or SNR, is given by this formula. The maximal achievable rate is computed as the product of the bandwidth W and log of 1 plus the SINR. The if dropper can also decode the data that it receives from the user and achieve this leakage rate given by the bandwidth times log of 1 plus the SNR. Now, this leakage rate can be up about it by replacing the true channel as if by its estimate at the cost of having this one plus epsilon squared term. Now this up about is nice because it depends only on the channel estimate, which is known by the edge node. So the edge node can compute this up about and inform the user to transmit at a secrecy rate, which is essentially given by the difference between the maximum achievable rate and the leakage rate. Now we turn into the computing model. We assume that the local device has a computing capability of FL CPU cycles per second. It has in total big L bits to be processed, among which it offloads small L bits to the edge node, which has a computing capability of FE CPU cycles per second. We use new to denote the number of CPU cycles required to process one bit, and now we are ready to compute the latency. First, the latency induced by local computing is given by the number of required CPU cycles divided by the computing capability of the local device. Next, the latency from offloading and edge computing is given by the sum of two terms. The first term is the offloading uh, latency given by the number of offloaded bits divided by the transmission rate. The second term is the latency from edge computing given by the number of required CPU circles divided by the computing capability of the edge node. And finally, the overall latency is given by the maximum of the two latency terms. Now we are ready to formulate the problem. We want to minimize the latency over the combining vector W, the surface coefficients alpha, and the offloading volume L. First, if the set of the active elements is fixed and known, then we have the fixed hybrid surface and we have these constraints. An important constraint is that the transmit power of the active elements must not exceed a certain power budget. On the other hand, if the set or the position of the active elements can also be optimized, then we have the dynamic hybrid surface. To solve these optimizations, we use the alternating optimization method. So we alternate between optimizing the computation parameter L for fixed communication parameters W and alpha and optimizing the communication parameters W and alpha for fixed L. Now let's get into each block to see how these parameters can be optimized. First, we optimize the offloading volume L. Here we rewrite the overall latency, which is the maximum of two terms. The first term is the local computing latency. It is decreasing with L. The second term is the latency from offloading and edge computing. It is increasing with L. And the maximum of the two terms has its V shape. We see clearly that the maximum is minimized at the intersection of the two lines. In other words, the latency is minimized when the two terms are equal. And we can compute the value of L for that to happen. And we denote it by L has star. Since the offloading volume is a number of bit, it has to be an integer. We integerize L. So we compare the two closest integers to the value L has star and we take the value which leads to a lower latency. 
Now we optimize the communication port, the combining vector W and the surface coefficients alpha. First, given the optimal offloading volume, we have seen that the latency from local computing is almost equal to the latency from offloading and edge computing. So we can replace the overall latency by the latter. But the only term that depends on W and alpha is the secrecy rate. So we are going to maximize the rate, which is given by the maximum between zero and the difference between the maximum achievable rate and the leakage rate. Now for the optimal solution, we expect that the maximum achievable rate is larger than the leakage rate. So we are going to remove this mask and we also remove this leakage rate because it doesn't depend on W and alpha. So we are going to maximize the maximum achievable rate. And this rate is an increasing function of the SINR. So we end up maximizing the SINR. Now given alpha, the solution for W can be easily obtained and it is given here. So we are left with optimizing alpha and we recall that it is written in this form. First, we optimize this phase. In the case when there is no active element, the SINR can be written in this form and is uh, upper bounded by this formula. Since we want to maximize the SINR, we want this upper bound to happen with equality. And it happens with equality if the phase of alpha is given in this way. So this is a solution when there is no active element. We propose to use this approximate solution even when there are active elements. Finally, we optimize the amplitudes of alpha. First, for the fixed hybrid surface, the maximization of the SINR can be written in terms of the amplitude of each element of alpha in this way. We propose to iteratively optimize the amplitude of each element of alpha while keeping the other fixed. We note that this maximization has a closed form solution, which can be found in our paper. Now the optimization for the dynamic hybrid surface is a bit more involved. We need to first simplify the maximization of the SINR to this form, which is given by the maximization of the sum of the log of one plus these terms, where this term can be interpreted as the SNR associated with the element N of the surface. Now to choose the set of active elements, we choose it to be the set of indices of A largest values among the SNRs. The idea is to choose the elements with the largest SNR to be the active elements. Now we have this power budget. How do we allocate it into the active elements? Well, we use the conventional water filling solution. So the idea is to first use the elements with the largest SNR. And as we have more power, we start using the other elements with lower SNRs. So we are done. We know how to optimize everything. And here's a quick recap of the overall algorithm. We first optimize the communication part, the combining vector W and the surface coefficients alpha. And then we optimize the computation part, the offloading volume L. Now let's consider a simulation scenario. We place the edge node at the origin of a two-dimensional space. We assume that it has five antennas. The surface is placed 50 meters to the right of the edge node. The user is two meters above the edge node and the surface, and it can move along this horizontal line. The if dropper is 30 meters to the right and nine meters above the edge node. We assume that all the links follow both large scale fading and small scale fading. For the large scale fading, we consider a bath loss model with reference bath loss of minus 30 dB at one meter. For the small scale fading, we consider the recent model. In this table, we provide the bath loss exponent and the recent factor for each of the links. The bandwidth is 1 MHz. The noise variance is minus 80 dBm. The power budget for the active elements is 0 dBm. And the channel estimation error is 0.1. The parameter for the computation is given here. In our simulation, for a fair comparison, we are going to fix the same total power consumption by both the user and the surface and we are going to compare some schemes. The first scheme is to process all the bits locally, and we have this latency. The next scheme is to use the passive reflecting surface with either random phase or optimized phase. And we are going to compare that with the optimized fixed hybrid surface and the optimized dynamic hybrid surface. First, we investigate the latency for just the user's location. 
we let the user move along this horizontal line. So we change the ICU and we plot here the latency in millisecond for just ICU. We first see that the local computing latency is the highest. It is actually an upper bound on the latency of all the other schemes. The passive surface with random face is only slightly better than that. The face hybrid surface is better than the passive surface with optimized face, and the dynamic hybrid surface is the best. We also see that when the user is closest to the EAP proper, which is this case, then the latency of all the schemes are almost the same as local computing. This says that when secure communication is not guaranteed, then we should not offload the data. We should process the data locally. On the other hand, when the user is closest to the surface, then the latency is minimized. Next, we are going to fix ICU to be 45 meter, and we investigate the latency versus the number of elements. On the left, we plot the latency as a function of the total number of elements when the number of active elements is fixed to one. We see again that the passive surface with random face is only slightly better than local computing. The dynamic hybrid surface is still the best and it has the gain of about 34% with respect to the passive surface with optimized face when the total number of elements is 100. On the right, we plot the latency as a function of the number of active elements when we have 50 elements in total. We see that with the dynamic hybrid surface, we can reduce the latency by about 2.6 times when we have 10 active elements. Next, we investigate the latency for just the computing capability. On the left, we plot the latency as a function of the edge computing capability. We see that the latency is first reduced sharply, but then saturates. That is because in the first regime, the latency of edge computing dominates, but in the second regime, the latency of local computing dominates. And again, of using the dynamic hybrid surface with respect to the passive surface is about 27%. On the right, we plot the latency as a function of the local computing capability. We see that the latency reduced roughly as one over the local computing capability and the relative gain of the dynamic hybrid surface with respect to the passive surface is about 30%. Finally, we investigate how the latency changes when the if dropper becomes more capable. Here we plot the latency as a function of the number of if droppers antennas. Recall that the S node has five antennas. We see that when the power budget is zero dBm, then no other scheme can improve upon local computing when the if dropper has the same number of antennas as the S node. On the other hand, if the power budget is 10 dBm, then the dynamic hybrid surface can still bring about 9% gain, even when the EAP dropper has the same number of antennas as the edge node. Finally, let me conclude the talk. In this work, we have considered the problem of secure computation of loading added by hybrid relay reflecting intelligence surface. We jointly optimize the offloading volume, the combining vector, and the surface coefficients to minimize the latency. Our results show that we can achieve significant gain with the hybrid surface. For example, using one active element, we can reduce the latency by 30%. Using 10 active elements, we can reduce the latency by about 2.6 times. In the next step, we are going to consider a multi-user system in which resource allocation between the users is also important. Thank you for your attention and we are looking forward to your question.